The information presented on this program is not intended to take the place of your personal physician's advice, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Discuss this information with your own physician or health care provider to determine what is right for you. Hey folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. So glad we could spend some time together. And all right, today, you're going to be mad at me. Okay, in fact, before I came out, I was talking to one of my producers. And they said, oh, what are you talking about today? I said, the, the side effects of soda. And he said, don't start. I don't want to hear it. La, 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 la. He started laughing at me. But I do want to talk about the side effects of soda, and it's going to cover a lot of things. Soda, artificial sweeteners, sugars, and if you've listened to my shows before, you know I talk about what's called the seven deadly sins. And the seven deadly sins of nutrition are, say them with me if you're a regular, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Now, if you're a little new listener, what you just said to yourself was, but that's my whole diet. Dr. Joe, I eat nothing but alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. How can I give those up? I'll starve to death. The answer is no, you won't because the nice part is there's 120,000 foods that you can eat, and that's an estimate. So there's plenty of good food you can eat. You're not gonna starve, I promise you. But soda's a biggie, because I'm blown away how many people drink soda every day. And there's regular soda, and there's diet soda, there's caramel colored soda, and there's stevia sweetened soda. That's a good one, by the way. I'll give you a little, uh, little inside scoop there. Stevia sweetened soda is okay. I, I don't have any problem doing that. But I do wanna talk about soda and sugars and what it's doing to your body. So if you're not a soda drinker, keep listening because we're gonna cover a lot of things that are gonna affect you as well. It causes the body to lay down fat in weird places. Uh, bad news from the soda industry. D uh, Danish researchers discovered drinking non-diet sodas dramatically increases fat buildup in your liver and in your skeletal muscles. So we have fat cells, and the fat cells are there to store energy. That's what fat is. It's just stored energy. And it's kind of funny because years ago, I, I have several degrees in nutrition, and we would thought it was called calories. Remember that word? It's not the word we use anymore in the biz. It's called energy. Well, no, I don't like that word. I'm going to call it calories. I'm not going to, I'm not going to bow to that because basically we're trying to make it in, you know, try to soften it up, sugarcoat it, so to speak. It's still calories. Uh, if you're using the sugar, it's causing the fat to form in weird places. And so you can kind of see we have a beer belly, it's called. Well, what that is, there's a layer of fat called the omentum, the greater and lesser omentum. And it's a, if you dissect out a body, if you cut somebody open, you got this, this, this sheet. If you hold it up, it kind of looks like this, 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 this sheet with these little bumps in it. These are fat cells. And that's what causes the beer belly. But soda causes it to settle in other places, and this is why. Sugar, high concentrations of sugar are utilized, well, sugar is utilized for fuel, but there's different types of sugar. This is where a lot of people get confused. There's fructose, glucose, maltose, galactose, lactose. There's all, anything with OSE on the end, like glucose, flat fructose, is a sugar. So anything with OSE is, is, is gonna be a sugar, but the thing is that the body uses glucose as its primary fuel. The cells can utilize glucose. So you eat sugar, let's assume we're eating pure glucose, which is kind of hard to do, but you're eating pure glucose. The brain sends a message to the pancreas and says, pay attention, we have sugar in the blood and we have to utilize it. We have to get it out of the system because if sugar builds up in the blood, sugar is slightly acidic. And the blood has to be right around seven, it's called the pH, levels of acid. And so if you're at a seven, you're in good shape. If you start going lower than that, more into the acidic range, six or five, I know lower is more acidic. To me, in my mind, higher would be bad. Here, lower is bad. So if you start going to the acidic range, the body has to buffer itself. So the body uses minerals like calcium to neutralize the acid in your body. So this is why if you have a high acid diet, again, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, your body is utilizing calcium and other minerals to neutralize the acid. Very dangerous, because now you lose your bone mass. What do we call that when you lose calcium in your bones? Osteoporosis. So osteoporosis, what I found in my research is that it's not always uh, just an aging process. It's a high acid diet process. And so if you go on a low acid diet, more fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, what happens is your body is able to, you don't have as much acid and your body's re re restore the bone mass. So too much sugar is an acid. The body has to neutralize the acid. So sugar gets into the blood. The brain says, hey, we got to get this sugar out of the blood as quickly as possible to maintain that acid level in the blood. The body releases insulin from your pancreas, which is on your left-hand side. 
So the pancreas releases insulin. Insulin goes out into the cells, and insulin acts like a key. It goes into the cell, and it opens up the cell so that it can receive the glucose. So the cell opens up, the glucose is used, and the insulin is then, has done its job. If you eat too much sugar, the body produces too much insulin. And so insulin is trying to get these cells to open up, and they can't take any more sugar in. It's going to gunk up the works. So what happens then is the cells say, I can't let you open me up and allow sugar in because it's going to gunk up the works. I'm going to resist you, insulin, from opening up my lock, so to speak, and letting sugar in. And that's why we call it insulin resistance. What's another word for insulin resistance? Say it with me. Type 2 diabetes. Exactly. So type 1 diabetes is the pancreas isn't producing insulin. And in cases like that, you need to take insulin from an outside source. Type 2 diabetes, you have too much insulin. So I don't like the fact they're both called diabetes. It's very confusing to people. So with type 1 diabetes, different story altogether. We're talking today about type 2 diabetes. So you got to cut down your sugar intake. And so what happens is the body can only utilize so much sugar. It takes the sugar, sends it to the liver, if, if it's excess, and it gets stored as glycogen. Glycogen is a reserve tank of sugar. So you start getting, you use up all the glucose in your blood, you still need a reserve tank so you don't just fall over and die, you have glycogen. Once all the glycogen stores are used up, what do we do? We convert that, that sugar into triglycerides where it gets stored as fat. So when you're eating a lot of sugar, the body has to store this fat, these triglycerides somewhere, and it stores it everywhere it possibly can. In your usual fat places, your belly, your butt, your hips, but it can also get into the muscles as well. It gets into the liver, of course, and if the liver gets fatty, you have a problem. When I went, when I went to school a couple hundred years ago, we were taught that fatty liver is always related to alcoholism. This is what it is. We were wrong. Fatty liver is now, they have something called non-alcoholic fatty liver, and that comes from eating too much sugar. And if the liver gets fatty, it can't do its job. Now, the liver's job is to break down just about anything that comes into your body, detoxify it, neutralize toxins, and then send it out to wherever it has to go. If the liver gets fatty, it can't do its job. But here's the cool part about the liver. The liver is the fastest healing organ in the body. So the nice part is as soon as you start making dietary changes, the day you start making dietary changes is when the liver starts to heal. And we can remove up to 70% of your liver and donate it to somebody else, and your liver grows back. So it's the fastest healing organ in the body. So as soon as you stop abusing it, it starts to heal. So if you're doing a lot of sugar, it's going to lay down this fat, and that's a problem. Consumption led to 11% increase in cholesterol compared with people who drank other beverages like water. So it raised your cholesterol. Why? Because of the fatty liver and the triglycerides. And so just eating sugar can raise your cholesterol. You're thinking to yourself, but Dr. Joe, I, people say this all the time, I don't eat meat or I eat very little meat or eggs and I have high cholesterol. What should I do about it? One in 100 people have genetically high cholesterol. 99 out of 100, you did it to yourself. And so by doing some dietary changes, simple dietary changes, we take the stress off the liver. And step number one is going to be cutting out the sugar. And soda is such a super high concentration of sugar, that's where we start becoming, that's where it becomes a problem. So cutting out the sugar is a real simple, easy thing to do when you start with soda. So if you want to do soda, I'm going to give you a tease here. I'm going to just basically cut to the chase. There's good sodas. And you can do soda sweetened with stevia, sweetened with lohan. You may have never heard of that one before. But these are natural sweeteners. They're not synthetic. And they don't have an effect on the body. In fact, stevia has about 70 different nutrients in it. Now, it's not a supplement. Don't say, I'm going to take stevia and I'm going to get healthy. It's not like taking Dr. Joe's Super Greens or Dr. Joe's Essential Source. But it's not as bad as sugar. What's worse than sugar? High fructose corn syrup. And then what's going to be worse than that? I'll talk about that in a second. So if you look at soda, in the United States, it's sweetened may, uh, oftentimes with high fructose corn syrup. If you go to other countries, if you go to Latin America, if you go to Europe, they use something called sugar. Now, white sugar is 50% fructose, 50% glucose. So the glucose is, can use, be used as a fuel. The fructose has to be converted into glucose in order to be used as a fuel. That occurs in the liver. 
And if you do more than 20 grams of fructose a day, which is not a lot, the body produces a waste product called uric acid. Uric acid gets in your joints and it hurts. What disease is uric acid famous with? Say it with me, gout, right? Exactly. So people say you gotta cut out the meat if you have gout, but nobody talks about cutting out the fructose, which is producing the uric acid. And that becomes a problem. Uric acid prevents the body from producing something called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels. It's a vasodilator. In fact, one of the supplements I have on my website, Dr. Joe's Nitric Oxide, it's extremely popular because as we get older, our blood vessels become weak and they don't expand and contract like they used to. So if the blood vessels become brittle and they don't open up like they should, it can raise the pressure in the body. And so Dr. Joe's Nitric Oxide is very popular because it helps the muscles start expanding and contracting again, which is pretty cool. But Fructose converts into uric acid. Uric acid prevents nitric oxide production, and so you can't produce the nitric oxide. You can't open up your blood vessels. So a lot of people come to me, my team of doctors, I shouldn't say just me, and they have aches and pains. So of course, from a chiropractic standpoint, we check for pinched nerves, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling. Many times there's a bone out of place pinching a nerve, and chiropractically, we put the bones back in place. Step one, patient starts to feel better. Step two of their treatment is we continue treating them, even though they're feeling better, to stabilize the joint. If you drop out after phase one, chances are your problem's gonna come back, you wasted your time and your money. So why not just get it done right? It's relatively quick and relatively inexpensive. But the uric acid, if we're doing the best chiropractic care in the world, and we're opening up nerve supply, and we're unpinching nerves, and we're putting fluid back into discs, and man, it's the greatest thing in the world. But you're sucking down fructose, creating uric acid, uric acid gets into joints and it hurts. And so now what happens? You're not getting all the results that you want. And our goal, my team of doctors' goal, is to get you well and keep you well as quickly as possible. So you have to play. You've got to help us out when you're a patient. So if you're doing a lot of sodas with the fructose in it, you've got a problem. So plain sugar is 50% fructose, 50% glucose. High fructose corn syrup is 55% fructose, 5% more fructose. And yet that little bit of fructose causes some real serious damage. And so in a lot of countries, as we said, in Latin America, Europe, they don't use high fructose corn syrup. They use sugar. And so if you go to a place like the world of soda, we have one in Atlanta, uh, you'll taste sodas from all over the world, same brand. But they taste different. Because different palates, different places around the world like things sweeter, less sweeter. Um, some countries won't allow fructose to be used because fructose is oftentimes made with genetically modified corn what's called high fructose corn syrup. And many countries have banned genetically modified food. Yay for them. I support that 100%. And so they can't use the fructose. So they have to use sugar. And in fact, if you go to grocery stores around the world, 80% of the products that you see in the United States are not available in other countries. Now, the brand name might be, but the ingredients are different because they ban things like genetically modified food or high fructose corn syrup or certain pesticides. And so it may be the same brand, the same soda, with different ingredients. Pretty interesting. So sugar is bad, which is 50% fructose, 50% glucose. High fructose corn syrup is worse because it's 55% fructose, causing the liver to produce uric acid. Uric acid prevents nitric oxide production. And then there's something that came out a while ago called agave nectar. Now, if you're into health food, agave nectar hit the scene, and boy, it was popular. Oh my gosh, agave nectar is the greatest thing in the world. It doesn't spike your blood sugar. I can use agave nectar, and it tastes sweet, and it's awesome. Well, here's the problem with it. It doesn't spike your blood sugar because it's not a lot of fructose, not a lot of glucose, I'm sorry. The glucose goes into the blood. So you're diabetic, you take your blood sugar, anybody takes their blood sugar and says, oh, I ate agave nectar and it didn't spike my blood sugar, it's okay. Exact opposite. It's 85% fructose and that fructose is now going into the liver, creating uric acid, preventing nitric oxide production, building up fatty liver in, in, in the body, and then it gets converted into glucose, so it spikes the blood sugar later. Not right away, you're thinking, well, it's okay. If it doesn't kill me right away, it must be okay. So I'm not a fan of high fructose corn syrup either. Sugar, bad. High fructose corn syrup, worse. Agave nectar, worser. Is that a word? More worse? So that's what's happening when you're eating the sugar in, in the soda or any type of sugar, what's happening, why it lays down fat in weird places. But you're thinking to yourself, but Dr. Joe, I don't drink regular soda. I drink diet soda. Diet soda is okay, right? It has no calories, so it must be okay. Studies shown, wait, wait, Texas, uh, Science, uh, Texas Health Science Institute. 
They found that those who drank more than two diet sodas a day saw a 500% increase in waste expansion. 500% increase in waste expansion by using something that has what? No calories. Isn't that crazy? Uh, research, a separate study and uh, the same research is conducted on mice suggested that aspartame, which raised blood glucose levels, that caused the weight gain, and when the liver encounters too much glucose, excess is converted into fat. So the artificial sweetener is actually raising your blood glucose levels. It's releasing it back into the blood, which then it gets converted into the whole process we just talked about. But here's the thing. That's not even my, my main concern with artificial sweeteners. It's going to make you fatter in most cases. That's what the studies show. So drinking it is insane. But there's three sweeteners, and we'll talk about aspartame. Aspartame is really important to discuss. Aspartame, when it gets into the body, breaks down to three components, aspartic acid, phenylalanine, and methyl esters. Again, don't worry about the chemistry. Aspartic acid is an excitotoxin. What that means, it causes the brain to fire faster than it's supposed to. Now, as a chiropractic team, we're always looking for ways to reduce pain, not increase pain. So if you're putting aspartic acid or glutamic acid, I did a whole show on glutamic acid a couple of weeks ago, and that shows on my website, drjoe.com, and on a podcast for the health of it, if you have a podcast service. When your aspartic acid gets into the body, it causes the, the nerves to fire faster than they're supposed to, and it can raise your pain level. So as a chiropractic team, one of the things my team does is we look at your diet and say, what, are you, what else are you doing aside from having pinched nerves that are increasing your pain? So if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, uh, uh, car accident, you ever been in a car accident ever, if the car was damaged, even a little, you were damaged. You're not tougher than steel. And so if you have these problems, many times it's a bone out of place pinching a nerve being aggravated by a bad diet. So if you have issues that you'd like to come see us in the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge, we would love the opportunity to be your doctor. So if you want to make an appointment to come see us, go to my website, drjoe.com, drjoe.com, and you can book an appointment right online. If you have questions, insurance issues, whatever, call my office. My staff will handle it for you. And we want to get you well and keep you well. Now, if you're outside the Atlanta area, I know this show goes all over the country, all over the world, we can always do a phone consultation with you for nutrition, but all that's on the website, drjoe.com. Stop suffering needlessly. Come in, follow our recommendations, do what we say, and in major, major, major majority cases, you're going to be thrilled. And you'll say, like all my other patients, so many of my other patients, why didn't I do this sooner? Why did I suffer so long? And again, I know you're worried about the pain, but we're worried about the pinched nerves affecting the organs. The pinched nerves also pinch blood vessels. So it could be a blood supply. If the bones are out of place, they rub up against each other, they wear out. It's called arthritis. Arthritis is a mechanical problem. Bones are out of place, rubbing up against each other. So we want the opportunity to get you well and keep you well. So stop suffering. Go to my website, drjoe.com. We'll set you up a time to come see us right away. We can usually do it within 48 hours or sooner. So we're talking about soda today, the dangers of soda. And we got a little bit into aspartame. And aspartame is, like we said, it breaks down to aspartic acid, which is cytotoxin to the brain. Phenylalanine is also produced. Phenylalanine can affect your kidneys. If you have a condition called phenylketonuria, your kidneys can't process phenylalanine, and that becomes an issue. And that can kill you. So you really want to stay away from that stuff. So aspartic acid, excitotoxin to the brain, cause the nerves to fire faster than it's supposed to, can increase your pain levels. Phenylalanine can get in your kidneys and cause damage. And the other component is methyl esters. Methyl esters is methanol. Methanol is wood alcohol. And wood alcohol is a highly toxic poison. Now in nature, if you have methanol, you also have ethanol. And ethanol prevents you from absorbing the methanol. A little chemistry there. So yeah, something tomato juice can have a lot of methanol in it, but it also has other things like ethanol to prevent you from absorbing this, these highly toxic poisons. When you separate out the methanol, found in as aspartic acid, phenylalanine, methyl esters, that's when it could cause damage. And one of the places it's real obvious is it can attack the optic nerve. It can affect your eyes. And so a lot of people, when they come in to me, say, Dr. Joe, I notice my vision's getting worse. I'm seeing tunnel vision. Many times it's worse when you fly. Doc, when I fly, I got tunnel vision. It was really weird. Tunnel vision means you can only see like you're looking through a tunnel, little, little circle areas in front of you. And I ask him, did you have any diet soda on the plane? Well, yeah, I did, as a matter of fact. Okay. So you got to stop that. It's the bottom line. Methyl esters becomes methanol. Methanol is wood alcohol. It can affect your liver. It can affect your optic nerve. And methyl esters becomes methanol. Methanol breaks down into formaldehyde which is what? An embalming fluid. 
Embalming fluid, you can't breathe it, you can't eat it, you can't ingest it, it's highly toxic. And yet you're getting very, very small amounts every time you use artificial sweetener. And then formaldehyde breaks down to formic acid and formic acid is used as an ant poison. It's toxic to ants, it's toxic to humans as well. So artificial sweetener, not a good idea. And this one study shows a 500% increase in waste expansion by using artificial sweeteners. Why are you using artificial sweeteners to begin with? You're trying to lose weight or you're diabetic. And if you're diabetic, this is very bad for you as well because it spikes your blood sugar. It's insane, it just drives me insane. Now, some people say, well, Dr. Joe, oh, okay, I've got some time here before the break. Dr. Joe, I, I use uh, sucralose. I don't use aspartame, I use sucralose. Sucralose is a chlorinated hydrocarbon. What that means is we take sugar, plain old table sugar, remember 50% fructose, 50% glucose, and we do five step process and we create something called a chlorinated hydrocarbon. Chlorinated hydrocarbons act like estrogen in your body. Last week I did a show on hormone disruption. So if you want to listen to those shows and thousands of other shows, go to my website, drjoe.com. Also, if you have a podcast service, it's called For the Health of It. So you can listen to the shows on my website. We have audio and video. Some people are visual learners, some people are auditory learners. All that's available. And it's, guess what? It's free. It's my gift to you. And we did a whole show on hormone disrupting chemicals. So sucralose is a chlorinated hydrocarbon, which is an endocrine disruptor. It acts like estrogen, and estrogen can cause abnormal cell growth. And again, if you're, not, if you're done growing up, chances are you're going to start growing out. And this is why so many studies show that when you use artificial sweeteners, you gain weight. So sucralose is <clears throat> excuse me, not a better choice, in my opinion. Uh, it's just as bad for other reasons. So once again, you could use stevia. You could use Lohan if you have to have soda. And I know I've seen these things where you can buy a, a seltzer maker, which I think is great, because you don't have to buy cans of seltzer, and you don't waste cans, and it's good for the environment. It's a whole lot cheaper. And so I have one. And you can make your own seltzer, but they have little um, uh, sweeteners that you can add to it to make soda. And many of them have artificial sweeteners in it. So please be careful. If you're thinking you're doing a good job, you're not. If you want to make your own soda and you have your own seltzer maker, is you can use a little bit of stevia, liquid or powder, and add some lemon juice to it, some lime juice to it. Those are perfectly fine. And this is the thing. This is what you got to understand about sugar and sodas. Once you start cutting back on it, do it for a couple of weeks. You'll go back and say, oh my gosh, this is so sweet. It's disgusting. Now, some people muscle through that phase and go right back into their sugar addiction. But I want you to consider not to do that. If something is disgusting and it's too sweet, don't eat it. That's the nice part. Uh, caramel color. Let me cover this before we go to break. Uh, Nonprofit Science uh, for the Public Interest petitioned the Food and Drug Administration to ban artificial caramel color used in a lot of sodas. Two contaminants in the color in the, in the sodas uh, are considered a color. The coloring is strictly for cosmetics. So it's the only reason we do it is to make the cola brown. It doesn't have any benefit to it. But these, they're, they're, they're now listed as possibly carcinogenic. Just 16 micrograms per person is enough to pose a cancer threat. So if you're drinking cola, and this is interesting because a lot of colas now come out with this novel cola, and it's clear. And it's kind of weird because you're used to drinking brown cola, and you taste it, and you go, wow, this is, it tastes just like cola, but it's clear. My brain is not processing this. That's the color cola should be. When you add the caramel colors, it's a problem. So again, 16 micrograms per person per day can pose a cancer threat. Most colas, both regular and diet, contain 200 micrograms in a 20 ounce bottle. 16 is beginning a threat, 200 micrograms. So it's not just the sweetener now. It's also the caramel color. So please, if you're going to drink cola, you shouldn't. But if you do, make sure it's clear. And you're going to think that's novel and cool, but it really isn't. Uh, it's actually the way it should be. So I'm going to have to go to break pretty soon. Um, if you're just tuning in, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. We're talking about soda and the dangers of soda. And I have tons and tons of research here. I've gotten to half a page. Okay, so we've got lots more to talk about. If you're just tuning in and you want to catch the beginning of the show, go to my website, drjoe.com. We have well over 1,000 hours of podcast there. If you have a podcast service, look at For the Health of It. That's the title of my first book, by the way, Eating Right for the Health of It. And that's on my website, drjoe.com. My second book is called Prescription for Extreme Health. So the first book tells you how to change your diet. It has a bunch of recipes in it. So it's really a good guide to get into the changing of the diet, the mechanics of it. Uh, prescription for extreme health goes into everything. We go into the nervous system, digestive system, nutrition. We have a section on athletes in there. So it's really a great book. It reads real easily, too. I write the way I speak, so it's really easy to read. So if you want to do that, go to my website, drjoe.com. As far as supplements go, I didn't cover that a whole lot in this show yet, 
but the minimum amount of nutrients you should be taking every day is Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They're two powders, they taste great. Um, that's the minimum you should be taking every day. In the winter time, I do recommend you also take vitamin D, 5,000 international units a day. Dr. Joe's vitamin D is five drops. We have a bunch of other supplements. If you have any questions about the supplements, you can always send me your questions through the website, drjoe.com. If you want to make an appointment to come see us in the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. Neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain. Stop suffering. Make an appointment right now, drjoe.com. Hey, don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito. So glad you're here. I love when you guys are here because we always have a good time. And hopefully you learn something every show because uh, that's my goal. We've done well over, I don't know, thousands and thousands of shows and lectures and talks. And every time we do one, I try to give you information you never heard before. And so if you like what you're hearing, go to my website, drjoe.com, and you can listen to podcasts. If you have a podcast service, it's called For the Health of It. So today we're talking about the dangers of soda. And one of the things that it does is it speeds up the aging process. Now, how many of you want to age faster? Raise your hands. Nobody wants to age faster. The whole game is to age slower. I guess if you're a 10 year old, you want to age faster. I want to be 18, I want to be 18, I want to be on my own. And then what happened when you turned 18? Oh my gosh, I'm on my own. I gotta do my own laundry, I gotta stack my own refrigerator, I gotta do my own dishes. It's an interesting process we go through growing up as humans, isn't it? But what happens is when sugar binds to certain proteins, it causes something called advanced glycation end products. A-G-E. It ages you. It's funny how the, the acronym is A-G-E, Advanced Glycation End Products. And when Advanced Glycation End Products get into the body, it can get into the connective tissue and kind of tear away or break down your connective tissue. And it can lead to things like wrinkles. But more so than the aesthetic issues, it's also happening inside your body. So if you do a lot of acid foods, what we call the, the seven deadly sins, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, those acid foods are also eating away. They're like Pac-Man, they're dissolving your connective tissue. But the advanced glycation end products are also being formed and they bond sugar into proteins. And that's a big issue because you can stop that by not eating sugar. How easy, I can't make it any easier for you. You're doing it to yourself. Famous guy once said, forgive them for they know not what they do. And so a lot of you are doing things harmful to yourselves. And every day I get emails and I get phone calls. I have patients coming out of our offices and people stop me in the street. They recognize my voice so they see me from TV. And I'll say, Dr. Joe, thank you. I had no idea what I was doing was so harmful to my body. And I love that. So if you see me or you want to send me an email, please do and, and let me know that because it, it makes me very happy to see that. So the phosphoric acid, in colas especially, that's another thing, you have caramel color, phosphoric acid, and sugar. Acid foods, the body is sucking calcium out of the bones to neutralize the acids. Even the bubbles in the soda are slightly acidic. Now, that being said, don't worry about that. If that's your biggest sin, you're fine. But you ever notice you can take a seltzer water or club soda and rub it on a stain and helps dissolve the stain? Why does, so, why does water not work, but club soda or seltzer does? Because it has bubbles. Those bubbles are slightly acidic and the acid starts to dissolve the stain. Well, that's what the acid is doing in your body. It's dissolving parts of your body. Side note, seltzer is bubbly water. Club soda is bubbly water with salt added. That's the difference between seltzer and club soda. Totally useless information you might need it someday. I don't know, a trivia question or something like that. So uh, this one study, uh, excessive levels of phosphoric acid found in sodas caused lab rats to be, uh, die five weeks earlier than rats who fed normal levels of phosphor phosphoric acid. So the phosphoric acid does it. This, this sugar causes the advanced glycation end products. Wow, we're really tearing this stuff apart, aren't we? If you do certain sodas, they're yellow, won't say the name, they use something called brominated vegetable oil. Now, brominated vegetable oil is bromine. If you'd heard me do my lectures on thyroid, your thyroid gland sits in your throat and it utilizes iodine. Most people don't get enough iodine in their diet. And iodine gets into the thyroid gland and it produces thyroid hormones. And if you know anything about thyroid hormones, they're called T1, T2, T3, and T4. And the number, T1, 2, 3, or 4, is the number of molecules of iodine that's attached to the hormone, okay? Most of us don't get enough iodine. One of the reasons I created Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source is to get people a source of iodine. And in both Super Greens and Essential Source, we add veg sea vegetables. Sea vegetables are an amazing source of iodine. And so 
when you take super greens and essential source, not only are you getting complete multivitamin, uh, fruits and vegetables, prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, a lot of minerals to neutralize the acids, omega-3 fatty acids, but you're getting iodine. And the thyroid needs iodine. And most people in the world are iodine deficient. And you can get a little iodine from fish, but if it's farm-raised fish, chances are you're not getting a whole lot. Uh, seaweed is a great source and sea vegetables, and that's why we put it in super greens and essential source. But iodine gets into the thyroid and is absorbed. There are other chemicals that look like iodine. They're called haloids. And that would be bromine, fluorine, and chlorine. So bromine, fluorine, and chlorine look like iodine. They're called haloids. And if you take a lot of bromine in, like drinking yellow sodas that have brominated vegetable oil in it, it can block up your iodine receptor sites, and you can't absorb your iodine. So now the thyroid is going to malfunction. And the thyroid gland controls your hormones, controls pretty much everything. And so if you don't have enough thyroid hormone, it can affect weight gain, it can affect hair loss, it can affect energy, it can affect mood swings, it can affect romance. Pretty important stuff. So you're sitting there drinking these super high caffeinated energy drinks, energy sodas that have yellow in them, and have the brominated vegetable oil in it, blocking up the iodine receptor sites, and now you have all these other health problems. So traditionally, we, the doctors, you come see us, and what do we do? Well, let's treat your thyroid. Something's wrong with your thyroid, let's treat the thyroid. We want to go beyond that. We want to go into why did the thyroid malfunction. Sometimes it's genetics. Can't change that. Haven't figured out how to do genetics yet. Well, we kind of have. It's called epigenetics. It's dealing with the environment to change the DNA in the cells, but that's another lecture on epigenetics. But we want to find out what's going on. So when I do a diet diary with my patients, and every patient fills out a, we ask them to fill out a diet diary, and they write down everything they eat, my doctors and I look at it and go, gosh, you're sucking down these yellow sodas, which have bromine in them, brominated vegetable oil, to block up your iodine receptor sites, maybe you need to quit that. Make sense? So you really want to consider that. They also, uh, brominated flame retardants are used in furniture, furniture foam. So it's not something you want to put in your body. And that's another lecture I can give you on furnitures and household items, but I, I, I don't want to digress too much. But you got to be careful. These citrus flavored orange yellow sodas have the brominated vegetable oil in it, and we already talked about the sugar and the artificial sweeteners. That's a problem. And the yellow dyes. These are issues. And in fact, the FDA just came out recently with a uh, report, and seven dyes that they allowed, or seven food additives that they allowed as safe, they're now pulling from the market. Oops, we were wrong. So food should have a natural color. I mean, George Carlin made a joke about blue food. There's no such thing as blue food. He said even blueberries are purple. So he, his joke was don't eat blue food because there's no such thing as blue food. And it's true. You don't have vibrant colors in a lot of fruit. It, it, if you look at candies, bright oranges, bright yellows, I mean like neon yellows. You know, yellow, you can see squash and things, you know, lemons, but they're not neon. So start thinking about that. It's not just the food, it's also the food additives that go in there. And so that's why another reason why I'm not a big fan of a lot of these sodas. Uh, they, of course, mess with your hormones. Because in the lining of the sodas, we've already talked about the thyroid, the lining of the can has something in it called bisphenol A or BPA. Now, I did a show again on hormones. I think it was last week. It's on my website, drjoe.com. And on our, if you have a, a podcast service, For the Health of It is the name of the podcast services if you use them. Look up For the Health of It. It's my podcast. And we did a whole show on hormone wrecking foods, and bisphenol A was one of them. So when I was a kid, way back when, we didn't line the, the, the cans, we used tin cans, and we didn't line them with anything, so things would stick to the can. And so you'd have to scrape the can out when you were done. Now, if you notice, you turn the can upside down, thump, everything falls out. I well, probably never thought about that. But we use a chemical many times called bisphenol A or BPA. Bisphenol A is an endocrine disruptor. Remember sucralose being an endocrine disruptor? This messes with your hormones again. So another reason you got to be careful with soda is the acid in the soda, the sugar, the bubbles, the phosphoric acid, are slightly dissolving the lining of the can, releasing this bisphenol A into the soda that you're drinking and giving to your children, messing with their hormones. So you need to stop that. Because BPA as an endocrine disruptor, it acts like estrogen. Estrogen causes abnormal cell growth. And what do we call abnormal cell growth? Well, one thing is cancer. Cancer is abnormal cell growth. So we don't want to keep dumping these growth hormones into your body that you don't need. And yeah, you're a big, big adult. What about these little kids? My heart bleeds when I see children sucking down a cookie and a soda. And I'm like, yeah, of course the kid likes that. It tastes good. I like it too. I'm not going to lie. But the child doesn't have 
the, the brain function to understand how dangerous it is. You do. And so now you know you can't use that excuse. Well, I never knew that. Yeah, you do. Ha <laughs> ha. So it's one of the downsides of listening to these shows is because you're going to learn things and go, oh, I can't unlearn that now, can I? I can't lie about that and say I didn't know. You do know now. So please be careful with that. Uh, and the cans are lined. And the more acid the food, the worse it is. So tomato sauce lined with bis bisphenol A. Now, a lot of companies, thanks to crazy people like me and other activists, well, I guess I'm an activist, went out and said, stop it. So now you're starting to say things like BPA free. You ever see that? Bisphenol A free or BPA free? That's great. Some companies are a little unethical and they're using something called BPS. BPS is similar to BPA, but they can say it's BPA free. It has BPS instead. So just be careful with that. Try to stay away from canned foods if you can, and especially acid in canned foods. Now as an Italian who likes to make sauce or gravy, we can argue about that another time, uh, you can buy tomato sauce and tomato paste and whatever it is in glass jars. Perfectly fine. In my house, if you go into my pantry, I have two shelves of this hodgepodge of glass containers. And you look at it and say, what has he got? Big, small, large, wide mouth, narrow mouth. The reason is when I have anything in glass, if it's a usable uh, container, I'm going to save it. Because whenever I make something, I love to cook. And if you, if you don't know what to cook, by the way, how to cook well, get a copy of my book, uh, Eating Right for the Health of It. It has well over 200 recipes in it, as long as some great uh, text as well. But when I cook, I, I make a lot of food. And so I store it. So I'll freeze it. I'll give it away. I'm big on giving food away. Um, at the end of summer last year, I had so much basil in my garden that I cut it all down. I made pesto. So I made tons of pesto. And pesto is really easy to make. Basil, olive oil, salt, pepper. I put a little bit of lemon juice in there. Uh, I do pine nuts and uh, dried, sun-dried tomatoes. And that recipe by, is one of many recipes in my book, uh, eat, Eating Right for the Health of It. Got too many books out there. Um, so I make it, and then I freeze it over the winter. And so over the winter, if I want to have a, 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 a nice summer food, I can defrost my pesto. It freezes really well. Put it in glass jars. So you put it in plastic. As it starts to expand and freeze, it can scratch the plastic, releasing chemicals that are hormone-disrupting chemicals, or bisphenol A, into the food. And we want to stay away from that. So just be careful about that as well. It's another danger of soda. Genetically modified foods. We brushed on that a little bit earlier. High fructose corn syrup is usually made with genetically modified corn. I don't know if it's, I never say always, but oftentimes it is. We don't know all the long-term side effects of GMOs yet, but we do know some of the short-term side effects. And a lot of research is coming out that it can shorten the lifespan. They did this in rats by two years. They found tumors. Um, and uh, also a lot of farmers are reporting that their animals aren't able to reproduce. It's affecting their reproductive capabilities. If it's happening in animals, chances are it's happening in people. And I see this as a trend uh, in my practice because 30 some odd years ago when I started in practice, we didn't see a lot of people coming in with fertility issues. They were able to make babies. And a, a, a show I just did last week, I think it was, uh, sperm count in Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and North America is down 60 percent from 1973 to 2011. 60 percent drop in sperm count. And uh, hormones, t testosterone is also down as well. That's a big issue because it's, I see more and more people ha may ha having problems conceiving because the sperm counts are dropping so dramatically. And it's affecting women too. If you listen to that show, I did it on uh, hormones affecting your health, I think it was. That's on the website, drjoe.com. And we talk extensively about what's happening to the male hormones and the female hormones in the, United, in, in the European and North American countries. And it's a really serious issue. If this trend continues, and it doesn't look like it's going to stop, the, the numbers just keep declining, it's, one of the predictions is making babies is going to only be for rich people because rich people can afford in vitro fertilization. And now research is coming out of Japan showing that you can take stem cells and alter them and turn them into a sperm. They've done this in, in animals already. And then the sperm can then impregnate the egg. But here's the thing, gentlemen, sit up and take notice to this. They can take female stem cells and turn them into sperm. So in theory, there's no need for us anymore. Something to consider. And it's happening very quickly. So it's, it's going to be something that's going to be mainstream very quickly. So genetically modified foods looks like they're bad. A lot of studies coming out that they're bad. I avoid them at all costs. Number one, genetically modified food is soy. Number two, genetically modified food is corn. 
So try to stay away from the GMOs because that can be a big issue. And where do we find the GMOs? We find it in high fructose corn syrup, which is why a lot of countries have banned genetically modified food. All right, so how to combat the soda diet belly? What do we do if we have this big fat belly? Because I know we're running out of time and I want to make sure we cover this. There's about 100 quintillion bacteria in your gut. This one paper, this one researcher found. And consuming high amounts of fructose, artificial sweeteners, and sugar alcohols, another thing that's used in low calorie drinks, may cause the gut bacteria to adapt in a way that interferes with the signals in your metabolism. So what that means is, in English, skinny people have different bacteria in their colon than fat people. And one of the things that's happening, yes, it's happening, they're doing fecal transplants. Talk about extreme. They're taking fecal matter with the bacteria from skinny people and implanting it into fat people to try to recolonize their colon with healthier bacteria. My thought is, what if we just change our diets? I used to be fat. Okay, I, used to, I have stretch marks on my chest, the back of my legs. When I was young, I was a little kid, 10, 11, 12 years old. And I remember looking in the mirror one day. There's a picture. My mother gave it to me. I have it. It's me in a bathing suit with the rolls of fat hanging over the top. I was a young kid. And I thought, I don't want that anymore. That changed my life. So I don't struggle with weight every meal, every, every day every, anymore. I struggle with weight every meal. So every meal, I have to be really careful because I put on weight pretty easily. So we have to have a normally functioning digestive system, which we're going to go into a little bit more. We're going to have to have a normally functioning nervous system because the nervous system controls everything. And you have to have a good diet. So how do we achieve that goal? Number one, from a chiropractic standpoint, if you have neck pain, back pain, headaches, shoulder pain, foot pain, I adjusted my secretary's foot uh, yesterday. She adjust my foot, I adjusted for her, she was fine. Any one of the 206 bones in the body can come out of place. So if you're having pain, that's a warning sign. It's telling you that something's wrong. Don't ignore it. It's like the light flashing on your dashboard. If you ignore it, it's gonna become a problem. Pain is a warning sign not to be ignored. From a chiropractic standpoint, the number one cause of pain are bones pinching nerves. Put the bones back in place, reduce inflammation, take the stress off the joint, and major, major majority of our patients are thrilled with their results. So if you have a problem, come see us. In the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. We'd love to be your doctors. So stop suffering needlessly. Go to the website, drjoe.com. Make an appointment right now. Don't wait. If you have questions, give us a call. We'll answer any questions you may have. But we want to help get you well and keep you well. If you want to get the supplements we talk about, at least the Super Greens, the essential source, please go to my website, drjoe.com, and you can order them right there. Uh, I do talk about vitamin D, especially in the winter months. Very, very important. Uh, B complex, I take that every day. Adrenal support, I take that every day. It, you can order the supplements right there. You can come to our offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge in the Atlanta area. Pick them up. You don't have to pay shipping then. If you're outside the listening area, I know a lot of these, these shows go all over the world. We can always do a phone consultation or a Skype consultation with you if you'd like to. Just send us a message on the website, drjoe.com. And by the way, if you have any questions on health, send them to me through the website, drjoe.com. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you might have. So the website's there 24 hours a day. If you like what you're hearing, and I'm assuming you do because you're still listening, or if you missed some of the shows, go to my website, over a thousand podcasts there, video and audio. If you have a podcast service, the title of the show is called For the Health of It. Um, you can get it from a podcast service. But spend a little time on the website. Oh, by the way, follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, because a lot of times we live stream our shows, and then you can actually call in sometimes, and that's kind of fun too. And send us your email address, because we have a list uh, that we send out uh, to uh, people on our email, of course, our newsletter, but we also send out specials on supplements. We may have a breakout lecture, a private party or something we want to invite you to. Many times if I give lectures, uh, people will say, um, well, they may charge. Sometimes there's big events and they, they charge, and I always tell the, the people sponsoring it, give me some free tickets so I can give them out to my, my, my listeners and my people on my website. So um, do that. So go to the website. It says contact us. Just send me your email address. We'll understand what to do with it. So today we're talking about soda and the dangers of soda, and we're almost out of time here, so I gotta move pretty quickly here. But we're talking about the gut flora, the bacteria in your colon. And if you eat too much sugar, you can have an overgrowth of bad bacteria. 70% of your immune system is in your digestive system. So if you're eating a lot of sugar, especially things like soda, which is super high concentration of sugars, you're gonna affect the bacteria in your colon. And you start producing bacteria that can actually cause you to get fat. Not a good idea. So be really careful about that. 
So the research is pretty clear as to what's going on there. You want to change your diet to recolonate the colon. So one thing I recommend with people with digestive issues on my website, drjoe.com, we have a product called Dr. Joe's Probiotics. And Dr. Joe's Probiotics are good bacteria. Super Greens and Essential Source have probiotics and something called prebiotics. Prebiotics feed the bacteria. Probiotics are the bacteria. Prebiotics feed the bacteria. So you want to feed those bacteria so they stay strong and healthy and they make little bacteria babies. And then we can recolonate the colon with good bacteria. When you do that, a lot of your sugar cravings go away and you start to eat better foods. If you start killing off the bacteria in your colon, there's something in your colon called yeast. Yeast loves sugar. And when yeast is in the, in the colon and you don't have enough good bacteria fighting them off, you start to get what's called a yeast overgrowth. It's called candida. Candida overgrowth can grow in your colon and then, simply put, it gets bored. So what it wants to do is it wants to start traveling. So it can find little holes in your colon, if you've heard me talk about leaky gut syndrome in the past, and it can get into the digestive system, into the blood system, travel through the blood and set up shop in warm, moist places. Where might you find a warm, moist place in the body? Your groin, your feet, your armpits, your mouth. And this is when we start seeing yeast overgrowth. And that's a real challenge when you have a yeast overgrowth. If you have that, you probably need to come see us. Now, or call us at least if you're not in the area. Now with yeast overgrowth, a uh, way you can tell is get a glass of water, clear glass of water, put it next to your bed. And when you get this clear glass of water, tomorrow morning when you wake up, get a big mouthful of spit and spit into the glass. Kind of scrape it along your mouth, along your tongue, spit into the glass. And what's going to happen is within an hour, if you start to see, see little tentacles come down, looks like a, like a jellyfish almost, that usually tells us that there's a yeast infection. If the spit just stays on the top of the water for up to an hour, you're going to be okay. And you probably don't have a yeast infection. If you find you have these tentacles, and again, it's a very cursory exam, but if you do it, you might want to call us so we can actually do further testing to see if you do have a yeast infection, and then we'll put together a protocol specifically for you. It's not easy to get rid of a systemic yeast infection, I'm not going to lie to you. But there's a nutrition protocol supplement-wise, uh, there's a food protocol we put you on, but a yeast infection can be deadly. It's not something you want to joke around with. And if you keep eating a lot of sugar, you're just feeding that yeast. And the yeast is going, woohoo! And it's making lots of yeast babies and affecting your whole body. It can also affect your brain function. You got to be really careful with that because it can affect mental function as well. And a lot of people with systemic yeast infections, they got brain fog, they're moody, some people think they're crazy. Once we get the yeast under control, the brain is able to function normally which is kind of cool. So once again, I'm almost out of time here. I got some big news for you I want to tell you too at the last minute or two. But if you want to make an appointment to come see us, go to my website, drjoe.com. Podcasts are there. We have a blog there as well. Send us your email address. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. But stop suffering needlessly. If you want information, if you want to learn how to get well, a lot of hospitals, a lot of doctors, just go to my website and listen to the shows. And each show is like a postgraduate class. In fact, I teach postgraduate for chiropractors, medical doctors all around the world. And so they get excited about that. So if you want to learn, go to the website. It's all free. You get postgraduate work here at no charge. And the website, again, is drjoe.com. In the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. So we'd love the opportunity to uh, meet with you if you'd like to come see us. OK, so last two minutes. Big news. Coming up, December 19th, I'm a guest on the Dr. Oz Show. I got, I got a call on a Wednesday. They said, we need you here on Monday. So I flew up to New York. It was spectacular. Dr. Oz, his whole crew couldn't have been nicer. We did a segment on uh, natural, re natural hangover remedies, which I thought was funny because I don't drink. Uh, but it's going to be on December 19th, and it's going to be a lot of fun because I was there, of course. And uh, Dr. Oz, I, I, again, I, I can't, if, if, if he's watching, thank you. It couldn't have been happier. And hopefully we can do this on a regular basis because the producer, Tina, Tina, if you're listening, thank you for inviting me up. Um, Tina said too, she goes, you were flawless. It was wonderful. Send me some more ideas and some topics. And if you listen to my shows, you know we've got a ton of ideas. So hopefully we're going to be a regular on Dr. Oz. And uh, it's, it was just a blast. And they picked us up at the airport and they drove us over there. Got to meet Marlo Thomas. Anybody old enough to remember Marlo Thomas? Uh, she was there as well. And she was very nice and very charming. She was promoting St. Jude's Research Hospital. Her father, Danny Thomas, of course, is the founder of uh, St. Jude's. And he's passed away. She's kind of taken over the reins now. Uh, but the Dr. Oz show was awesome because it was so cool. I had a full audience, and, and we, we did a backstage thing. So if you follow me on Facebook and follow me on Instagram, we're going to post that there as well. I'm also going to post it on my website, drjoe.com, because we did a behind the scenes 
of the Dr. Oz show, which came out really good as well. Um, and I, it was just a blast. And what's interesting too is this message about natural health care, 30 years ago, nobody listened. Now it's mainstream. Shows like this are mainstream. They're so popular. Uh, my podcasts are usually popular. Dr. Oz is having people like me and other brilliant people on, on the show as well. So I'm really excited that people are starting to sit up and take notice because life expectancy in the United States is actually dropping. And so we've got to fight that, and we can have a normally functioning nervous system, normally functioning digestive system, and good nutrition. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Again, December 19th, I'm going to be on Dr. Oz's show. Tell your friends about the show. We'll catch you next time.